everybody. It's uh, Pete Carmasino here at Chicken Analytics. This is the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Thanks for tuning in once again um, to check out what we're doc- what we're talking about here at Chicken and uh, using our power gauge uh, power gauge rating right on equities. And so I'm kind of uh, stumbling around for my words because you know we've just had a, a, an odd market today. We you know start off very strong after a pretty dismal week. Um, kind of off the best levels of the day, but not negative and not, not yet anyway. Um, still kind of early afternoon and um, things can you know certainly change here. We've seen just some you know volatility here day to day, week to week, hour to hour um, in some cases. And you know a lot of that is the push and pull on rates, uh, you know, recession talk, uh, things of that nature. So everyone's coming out and you know even in, in general, you just kind of see headlines out there talking about Wall Street, you know, the entire, uh, encompassing of, uh, of Wall Street um, is talking about more rate hikes and a recession. I mean, we've been talking about this now for a long time. And, um, you know, recession is maybe uh, trying to be baked into the cake. I'm not exactly sure it is. Um, I don't think anybody can say that with certainty. Um, soft landing, no landing, hard landing, uh, and now someone said um, no landing with a reacceleration, meaning almost like a. You remember the movie Top Gun, where they request a flyby, where they're not landing but they're just flying by. Um, so I guess uh, toying with landing here. So uh, it's a bad analogy, maybe, but I mean, it's a good visual anyway. Um, so you know, you just you're just kind of seeing what's happening here in the markets is is more uncertainty. And so uh, we're trying to find some things that are certain. And, you know, that's obviously from the trend standpoint, looking at the S&P, you know, looking at uh, the number of rallies that we've had in this quote unquote bear market. I'm not sure it's over yet. Uh, I don't think anybody is, but I'm not bearish. I'm not bullish. I'm kind of playing the odds. I'm looking at a sideways market here for the last, I don't know, almost year uh, coming up on a year anyway. And we're kind of at the same levels we were last April um, and change. So, I'm just seeing another developing pattern that I called out a few times that is kind of setting up again on the S&P. It's this weird uh, head and shoulders that I've built that happens to have two right shoulders. I don't know why, um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing on on the charts. I don't know if it's sentiment driven. I don't know if it's um, coincidental. The The idea is is that no one really knows, but we're basically trying to find the uh, divining rod to kind of you know figure out what what exactly is occurring, and again, a lot of it is sentiment. A lot of it is heightened volatility. There's no doubt, right? We know volatility is up. Um, you're talking about zero day, uh, you know, expirations on 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 uh, options. Um, in other words, they you know buy them in the morning and they expire at night at the close. You know that's going to add volatility on the upside and on the downside. It became, gets more of a a gambling or a casino environment than anything else. Uh, but I guess it's a necessary evil if you're in that camp of trying to protect day to day using less premium. But the point is, I'm not an options expert by any means, but at the same time, um, I just, I, all I'm looking at is just volatility expanding on an intraday basis, but we're not seeing the big volatility measurement like VIX spiking at any particular time. So we're seeing the overall market volatility be dampened a little bit, but that intraday move, uh, sort of wild movements around these this four thousand level um, and other levels on other indexes as well. But I'm looking at the S and P, um, just kind of playing with people's heads a little bit. So, uh, you know, news is out. We've talked about rate hikes. We've talked about everything. But the point being is, is there's really no direction yet in this market. So we're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to look at some stocks today. Uh, we're going to look at some names that were upgraded. Uh, today by uh, a few by uh, retail names by Deutsche Bank, um, one or two names by JP Morgan, and one name by Goldman, which happens to be in the energy sector. So I'm just going to go, we'll look at the overall market like we typically do, and then we'll dive into the check-in platform and kind of take a look at um, what's happening on these names that, quote unquote, Wall Street is recommending. So let's see, uh, let's dive into it and see what we see. All right, folks, we're back here. Um, I just pulled up my profile here on Twitter. Feel free to follow me. It's at Pete Carmesino on Twitter if you're a Twitter follower. And don't forget our power feed. We have a newsletter. If you go to Chaken Analytics, uh, or I'm sorry, ChakenPowerFeed.com, ChakenPowerFeed.com, 
you can sign up for the newsletter. It's free. You get some interesting anecdotal evidence. You get a lot of research from uh, four of us here at uh, Chaken Analytics. And it's a lot of fun. Um, there's an archive here. There's some really interesting things. My la latest article was Relative Strength Isn't Just for Stocks. And um, talking about the bearish side of Relative Strength, which I uh, reviewed, uh, Vail Resorts M symbol MTN, just looking at how that might be breaking down um, and how Relative Strength kind of led me to find that. So again, it's a fun newsletter. Uh, it is free. It gets in your mail uh, mailbox every morning. So check it out. Um, just looking at uh, that that particular S&P pattern I was just talking about. Um, I told you it's kind of a weird uh, head and shoulders thing. Again, this is probably not in any um, technical analysis books, but uh, it might be. Um, I see it. I'm, I'm just calling it out. The head and shoulders is definitely there. I can see it. Um, it's plain as day for me. Not perfectly set up as I drew it here, but there's the head. Uh, there's your left shoulder and two right shoulders that formed uh, back in uh, last year between March in April. Now, we're seeing the same thing here again. Now, this is, again, you got to squint to see this, but I drew these um, these uh, figures here to kind of point out what I'm seeing. And I kind of circled this area that it was kind of, you know, creating that setup again that it did here. And I don't know if it's going to follow through, but I'll tell you that 4,100 and now the 4,000 level, which is kind of more of a psychological level, is coming into play. And I think that's um, maybe setting up. This is an extreme target. Can this happen? I guess it's possible. Don't forget, the head and shoulders can flip. And obviously, we can see an upside move back to uh, the highs as well. Is that likely? It's maybe not on, under the circumstances. But at the same time, if you look at a long-term chart of the S&P or any kind of index, we all know that it, uh, we are bulls at heart on the long-term basis. But in the interim, we're just trying to make sure that we can avoid too much drawdown and too much pain um, to finally enjoy those long-term upsides that we typically get in these indexes. Uh, just going on, uh, this is a weekly chart. I uh, haven't shown this in a few weeks. I'm just showing my bullish percent had been decreasing over the last several weeks, but the two bookends here, the top uh, sector is the New York uh, Composite, NYA. The bottom one here is the S&P in the middle is the NASDAQ composite. And so on the NASDAQ, you're just seeing bullish percent uh, deteriorate slightly. And just today, we're seeing the S&P move up again a little bit. Now, it's an update. It's great. It's fine. I'm just calling it out that rally number five is kind of stalled. And it stalled right around that resistance level. I was calling out about 41.75 or so. And now we're sitting around 4,000. So will we see rally six finally break the back of this bear? Could be. Um, I'm not exactly sure. So we'll, we'll just have to kind of uh, move along and kind of wait until, until that plays out, right? That's all. And so um, I put some lists here together. And uh, this is a list of a screen that I did, the screening results you can see. And I'm just looking for names that are changing trend. Now I got an industry that's weak. I do have a strong stock only because it's still above its long-term trend. But I'm telling you, with that relative strength weakening here, um, certainly not convinced, even though they had some nice earnings and all that good stuff happened. But when I look at this name, um, I obviously see a bullish name, but I see negative money flow and relative strength starting to change. So I'm not exactly super excited about that. Um, here's another one, this Peabody Energy, it's a coal company. Been really s sideways and steady uh, for most of the year but I did get a relative strength reading on the, on the downside here. So I thought I'd, I'd call it out. Here's a pretty big name here, Agilent, um, Agilent Tech Life Sciences um, type company. Uh, let's see what they are. These guys are a $41 billion market cap, only 6 billion in sales, slightly uh, heavy valuation, but a recent relative strength change here. So I'm just calling these out to take a look. Here's the one I talked about the other day. Um, don't know what it's doing, but I know it turned bearish uh, after the fact, and that just happened. Again, that's part of that power feed newsletter. So um, there's your negative relative strength, kind of teetering and certainly flirting with that long-term trend line. Even though it's a strong stock and strong industry, we're starting to see things break down internally inside of the power gauge, and certainly the price action is as well. So let's go take a look at some of these names that uh, some folks were upgrading here. And I saw an upgrade 
from Deutsche Bank on Walmart, which very, very much surprised me. And Home Depot, as well as Lowe's in the same industry, are definitely on the downside. Again, these relative strength signals are negative for us. We actually have a uh, bearish rating. Now, remember, that says neutral negative, but that's a bearish rating on Walmart. And how do I know that? Well, I know our system. But the reason why it's neutral negative and if it closes below this long-term trend, which it is threatening to today, it will go back to bearish. Because when a bearish stock starts to rally and goes above its long-term trend, it's an alert for us to let you know, hey, this bear is technically getting better, but fundamentally staying the same, okay? Sometimes Wall Street ignores fundamentals and technically buys stocks. So Walmart is in that situation except for the fact that the relative strength is changing to the downside. Another one mentioned in that uh, article today that I saw was Home Depot. Uh, another name that has just recently changed trend. So I understand stocks feel cheaper down here. Well, you know, when obviously after Home Depot reported, it, it fell out of bed, um, um, you know, quite dramatically. But sitting at the lower end of the band, I absolutely oversold. I'm not going to deny that. Even though money flow is a little strong, it's weakening here at the end, but I'm seeing a relative strength change which to me on a big name is super important on the upside, like it was here back in October, where that move got you from 271 to about 350. And now this move, I don't know what that's going to turn out to be, but I do know it's negative and I don't want to play in that game right now. Um, just the sister company Lowe's, just looking at Home Depot and Lowe's alongside of it, pretty much the same setup here, weak stock, weak industry, and uh, negative relative strength. The other one was Dollar Tree, D-L-T-R. This again from Deutsche Bank. We are bearish on this name and rightfully so. We obviously have got uh, a power gauge that's very bearish and relative strength has been pretty much off the table for us. Again, this is uh, an avoid sell or potentially even bet against uh, type name at this, at this particular point. So that's what we're saying on these names. Uh, on the retail sector. The last one is Costco. I'll look at it real quick. I don't have a lot of time. So I want to get to these other names here as well. <clears throat> but same setup, right? Relative strength broke down here. Again, from 499, went as low as 440, 450 or so. Definitely tradable. There's no doubt money flow came in, but relative strength for me gets the most vote. So it's an avoid until everything kind of gets in the way. Um, one name that was upgraded over there at JP Morgan saying that has a 20% upside was the Zillow group. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with it. Um, you know, can it move eight points, nine points? Yeah, sure. Why not? I guess it can. Uh, can it get to that $50 level? That looks about from a technical standpoint between 50 and 55 possible. You do have relative strength in your favor, excellent money flows. So that's a better technical re uh, recommendation. Fundamentally, still neutral, not really loving it. Um, at that particular point. They also mentioned the name MVB Financial um, that they thought could benefit as a fintech type bank. Now, I have to say that this is an interesting chart setup, strong stock, strong industry. I'm just not there on ultra strength, but I can't ignore the improvement. And, and I am seeing it there. And our rating turned bullish. So this is an interesting one. Just be careful. It's obviously up on a recommendation. It is a very small cap, only $300 million market cap. Um, it's not like something uh, that can't be volatile. And the last one that was upgraded today um, by Goldman was Shell Corp, Shell Oil. That's been in play for us for a long time. But even though negative money flow was in the cards a little bit, we saw positive money flow and a, and a better trend on the upside. All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. I thank you again for tuning in. We'll be back next week again here on the Halftime Show. And Pete Carmesino, follow me on Twitter at Pete Carmesino. We'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good one. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.